Spring practice is getting rolling in Auburn, Alabama. And to break it all down from Auburn, live best in the business, Justin Hokinson. Justin, we're finally here, man. We finally got spring football, and everyone and anyone is curious what's going on in that quarterback room. I know it's so early, but what are your first impressions of that room right now? Um, yeah, I think that – I, I kind of think the spring is going to be more attention on the number two spot, which would be Holden Garner and Hank Brown. I, I mean, I think Peyton, Peyton goes in the starter. He's got the experience. Um, I think there's a lot of things, as far as Peyton's concerned, I think there's a lot of things we still have to figure out. We won't figure it, it, it all out in the spring. Like He has to get better. The receiver room is going to be different. The, the the coordination of the offense and the play calling and the strategy, that'll be different. There won't be looking over your shoulder and another quarterback coming in and running plays. Like There's a lot of stuff that has to play itself out to really determine if Peyton Thorne how much better he can be and what that might look like. And we're not really going to know until the fall, until the season starts. So, mm-hmm. I, But Peyton Thorne goes in as the starter. I think the intrigue is around, for now, is, is around Hank Brown and, and Holden Gurner and who can win the number two spot. Um, I think I think it's sort of now or never for Holden Gurner, who's been there a couple of years. Hank Brown's the kid that was committed to Liberty originally, flipped and came with Freeze to Auburn. Whoever wins the number two spot then can go into the summer with some confidence and go into the fall potentially as the number two guy, you know, once you get into the fall reps get limited. So whoever's two in the fall is going to get a few more reps and can have at least an opportunity to push um, Peyton Thorne. And maybe, maybe there won't be a for sure two out of the spring. Maybe it'll go into the fall with those two guys competing, but I'm sort of more interested in who wins that two spot and can then push Peyton Thorne versus necessarily Peyton Thorne this spring. You know, that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And Justin, like this was something I was saying even after spring practice last year when Peyton Thorne got to Auburn. It's like, hey, he missed the most important practices of your college football season, which of course is kind of laying that foundation during the spring. What would your surprise level be if Auburn went back to the portal post spring to bring in someone to maybe elevate the room or compete for that job over Peyton Thorne? Um, what would my surprise level be? A tad surprised. Not not shocked, but a little surprised only because I think there were some maybe some opportunities in the offseason to go get a portal quarterback. I think Hugh Freeze looked at a lot of guys and evaluated a lot of guys. I don't think he really made a hard push except for Riley Leonard in the very beginning. And there's some things that went on there. I think that's a guy he originally would have been interested in. Um, but past that, I don't I mean he didn't make a really strong push. I mean, they're interested in Cam Ward, but um, there's just elements of 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 the portal in general, especially portal quarterback, that Freeze is nervous about. He he doesn't like the idea of just going and and paying an astronomical amount to an NIL quarterback and bringing them in the room where they're going to expect to start, and it changes the dan- the dynamic not only of the room but of the team. Like he's just he's really trying to build the culture and the community a certain way. And he's already a little hesitant on how he deals with the portal, let alone a portal quarterback, which is the kind of player that would come in with completely different demands and expectations, even beyond, um, you know, a normal a normal portal player. So could they? Yeah. Some of it might depend on the spring. If he goes, gosh, this is just not any better. I have to bring somebody in. Um, if, if, if the opportunity is there, if it's a player that he thinks can help, if it's somebody he thinks he can trust, if it's somebody that he thinks he doesn't have to – you know, toss some really huge NIL number at maybe, but if it's something that is, is on the cusp of, could it, could it, is it too big a number? Is the expectation from the quarterback going to be coming to just start? Like I'm going to give him the job. Is it something that could mess, mess with the, the dynamic of the quarterback room and of the team setting? He's going to be hesitant to do it. So I think we'll just kind of have to wait and see on it. Well, I think one thing we can agree on is whoever is playing quarterback for Auburn, uh, their job is going to be a lot easier because Cam Coleman is going to be on the receiving side of that. Um, what's been the the thought process with him so far? I know he's been on campus all of like 15 minutes, but what's the the impressions been like for him this early in spring? Yeah, boy, he is um, he's one of the guys that all respect and credit to Charles Power and and everybody that does our rankings. But like, he's one of those guys that it doesn't take a rocket scientist to be like, he's really good. He's he's gonna play right away. Um, he just he's 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 big, strong. He's got great range. He tracks the ball well. Uh, really, it's just the degree of his impact, and and I would say more so the degree of how early he impacts the game really just comes down to how quickly he learns things, how quickly he picks up on just the nuances of playing the position, um, whether it's creating leverage and running routes or whatever it might be, being physical as a blocker, learning the offense, 
Um, you know, the RPO system is different. Like there has to be a big trust between the quarterback and the receiver to both be on the same page and making the right reads. So there is an element of that, that um, it's not just, Hey, you're run a hitch. It's read the defense and run the right route based on. So there's some, there's some stuff there that he's going to have to learn, but he's just so big and talented. There's not another guy like him on Auburn's team. There's not a lot of, you know, freshmen like him in the country, not a lot of players like him, period. So he'll make an impact. He'll play. Um, but it's still young. A lot of stuff that he's got to learn, but he'll have. So I would think day one, I mean, I would be shocked if he doesn't start in the first game day one. It's just how quickly can he make the kind of impact that he might make come November? Yeah, bright future without a doubt. But I'm, I'm excited to see him hit the field then sooner rather than later. That's that's encouraging for, I think, all college football fans, not just uh, the good folks in Auburn, Alabama. Justin, last question for you, man. A lot of headlines on the offensive side of the ball, but a new D.C. in town. DJ Durkin, I know we're not hitting people yet. Is there a different buzz, is there a different temperature on that side of the ball with how they're doing things right now? Well, we talked to Hugh Freeze a little bit about that. He he kind of mentioned a couple of things. Um, one was he thinks DJ Durkin's attention to detail is 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 really elite. Um, he 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 thinks that um, just sort of how he organizes things is is top level. I will say from talking to people last season when Rob when Ron Roberts was was at Auburn. I didn't necessarily get the sense that they loved his organizational skills. I'm not in the room. That's just some of the feedback I got was organizationally could have been better. I get the sense that's not the case with Durkin, like organization, attention to details all there. The other thing that Hugh Freeze mentioned was the hope is they give up less big plays in critical situations. Now, I didn't think Auburn was terrible in that regard last year, but there were a couple of moments. I mean, if you not just, of course, the way the Alabama game ended, but Think about the fourth quarter to Georgia. You had that game with a chance to win, and you, you give up some big plays to Brock Bowers down in the secondary and stuff like that. So um, I think that's the big thing he's hoping. He, he described D.J. Durkin and the way he sort of coordinates his offense and calls plays is from top down. Figure mm -hmm. out the top, make sure you're not getting beat deep, and then work towards the line of scrimmage so that you're never calling a play or designing a defense or designing a play that could leave you really vulnerable to give up big explosive plays and so that's kind of how Hugh Freeze described it and he hopes that DJ Durkin's arrival will limit some of those big plays especially in critical moments I think there's there's certainly an aggression and an aggressive style that Durkin will bring he's going to coach the linebackers as well but that's kind of the two things organizational and then limiting the big plays over the top Durkin's certainly a guy that's been in the league uh, for a bunch of years like he knows what's coming he knows what to expect and I think he'll have a pretty good idea of how to design a defense and attack you know, an SEC offense. A lot of exciting headlines in Auburn. Make sure you keep an eye over at Auburn Live. Get a membership at Auburn Live. Justin and the team there just crushing all the coverage when it comes to all things Auburn. Hey, man, appreciate you. We're back, huh? We're back. Spring football is here. We'll We're back. I'm We're sure back, checking man. a lot. Auburn fans, if you like that video, go get a membership over at Auburn Live. Going to keep you in the know for all things revolving around your Tigers. Also, subscribe right here to the On3 Roundtable YouTube channel.